um, you know, there's some people where you can come like a flood, you can hit them with an hour long sermon, and then there's some people where you just gotta kind of drop little nuggets here and there on them, um, and take your time with them. So, you know, that would be my best advice from my experience, and anybody can do it. You know what I'm saying? And the more you do it, and remember too, even spiritually, the more you do something, the heavier you get at it. And the more you have a humble understanding and knowing that it's true, Jesus said, don't worry what you're saying that day and hour. I will give you a word from the Holy Ghost that your enemies will not be able to gain, say, nor be missed. It is really true, man, I'm telling you. Um, so, may God bless you for even having that, 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 hum, that hunger to even talk to him about Jesus. There's a lot of questions to compromise, you know what I'm saying, and kind of never mention job site. It's funny because I got a, I got a couple testimonies to tell y'all. So, um, and that answered, brother, and, and um, we're going to be getting together too, you know, four of us. But uh, I just want to say, um, lately, I've been, I've been, please announce yourself three, four days, and I've been training a lot of people. And on my way home, I've been like, okay, well, I didn't, I didn't Yeah. <laughs> 
dumb, biker looking guy at the Dunkin' Donuts, because that's what we need out It's better to be there than drive unnecessary distance from, you know, the guy's office. So, I'm sitting there, I'm the first one in the Dunkin' Donuts. I'm chilling. I'm on the phone with one of my brothers from Virginia. Talking about the road with him. And I hope, I, and I see this big jacked up biker guy just kind of like, look like he's bothered about something. So he pity me, I would be told the spirit guy to go, like, get up the phone with him, and he's going to talk to him. He got your number. You and him can talk anytime. This guy right here, you may never see him again. He always got to use wisdom, saying, never, never, you know, override what God is telling you to do just because you're talking with someone that you know or don't know where that's, that lost soul will be tomorrow. Take advantage of it. But anyways, no, immediately, it was like he was waiting for me to talk to him about the Lord and the soul. And I immediately just started talking about Jesus. I got into Peter, how Peter was a rough man. And I, see, my brother John, like you was asking, God gave me the discernment what type of spirit he had, what type of person he was, what type of personality he was. I was able to line up the right, the right, right, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The right tool for the right um, job. You know what I'm saying? It was the Holy Ghost, though, not me. And I started, and the guy just opened up. He was like, man, I like you, man. You cool, man. He's like, I ain't from here. I'm going up to New Hampshire. I had to drive up to Connecticut to see a doctor. He had issues with his body. You know what I'm saying? And he come to find out he used to be in Hell's Angels. I felt really is biker group, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, man, I'm out of that now. I don't got time for him, man. I just want to go to Florida and live my life. I ended up preaching the gospel to that man, even when the boss, put up, put the boss walked in. I'm still preaching. I ain't going to stop. Like, what do I look like? Some kind of clown? My, my permanent job is to preach the gospel. If I do a regular nine to five job, it's just temporary. I know this for a fact. Hallelujah. The Bible said in the book of Acts, the disciples said, what are we supposed to stop doing the will of God and go wait on tables? Now, don't get me wrong, that's not for everybody. I'm not saying that every man of God in the room can put your job and hit the clock. You think you got to take it down. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying, but God has certain people that are called to do full time. It's going to be a lot more people than you think. And that's why God is doing this financial and supernatural miracle, because He's not going to just give money to money-hungry people. He's going to give money to people that he can trust to use that money to do the will of God. You see the difference? The problem is the finances have been going towards bulls for years now. The, the Creflo Dollars, the Jim you know, whatever, he had heard of, Joe Osteen, and the, um, what's the other one that just went to uh, uh, Roman Catholicism? Kenneth Copeland, crazy, wants to do the chat. I ain't flying around with it. I'd be tight if I was in that ministry. You know what I'm saying? Like, thanks for the chat. I'm going to go kiss the posting now. Oh, crap. You know what I'm saying? You see where I'm going with this thing? So, you have to not focus on the present. See, I could have focused on, Lord, what is it? Three days, I haven't got a sale. I got to do the What God said, ain't the soul more valuable? a punked out check, I was like, hey, man, boy. and every single day I come home and tell my wife, babe, I prayed for three people today, I prayed for one, I, all right, after I talked to the biker, I gave him the card, he's going to call me, and I know he will, because he put up his, he got my word on that, because I wasn't able to do a prayer with him, because he had to stay up, hey, it is what it is, right, but later on in the day, preaching to a biker, hell's angel, hell's angel biker,
home for fun. And I'm just like, yo, I, I, I joke with people when I go in their house. I'm like, yo, if like white meat dog, let me know, baby. You know what I mean? It makes people laugh. I ain't afraid of the dog, but I ain't gonna be an idiot either. Just walk up to a kid with foam in his mouth. Like, hey, come on. You know what I mean? You know, you better go over there and sit down, dog. But you should have seen the pit bull. If it was anyone else, he'd have been well, he was just calm on the front, just chilling like a yo. Thank you for coming here, sir. And it's like, this is what I'm saying, saying. Let's not focus on the negative. Because what the devil wants, because I'm, I'm hearing this from other Christians too. Not just my own situation. You know what I'm saying? Yo, the devil is trying all he can right now to sidetrack you, especially financially. With bills and struggling and that. Because he wants you to stop focusing on God. He wants you to get all worried and get a second job and walk out. I had to fly home. Like, I had to come home and get prepared for the, you know, for the study and charge my phone and get into prayer. <laughs> That's my life. I got my phone and charge it down because it was already dead. You know what I'm saying? So, God was letting me know, like, if my children want to work for me full time, A, they have to have a heart to know all they want to do is please God. That's just want to please God. If you pray with someone that's not so you can look good, it's because you love God and you want to bring this precious soul to Him. Think about that. Think about how good it would feel if you see this woman at the you know, supermarket crying at customer service and you walk right by and she says, I lost my wallet. My leg wouldn't be me. I'm going to lose my place. I'm crying. And you're down in aisle 13 and right by the bread, you see a purse. Oh, yes. You roll up to the right girl, I got your back, thank you, Jesus. He got your back. Give it a walk right now, thank the Lord. How good would that feel? To give that woman back what belonged to her. So how much greater does it feel to give a soul back to the King of Glory? He lost that soul. That soul was off into the woods. Every single day that soul could have got killed by wolves could have been killed by lions, could have been killed by gunfire, killed by this, killed by that, killed by drug overdose, whatever the murder would be. And you, led by the Lord, snatched up that soul and brought that him or her to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I'm talking about. We have to have a genuine love for God and a genuine need to please God. To please God. No matter your circumstance, it doesn't matter. Because you know what uh, David Wilkinson said, one of, one of the greatest men of, of God in our time. David Wilkinson said, "You know what blesses the heart of God is when those people in their good time, when everything is right, the bills are paid ahead of time, money flowing through, when they're on their prayer." They're, they're up at night on watch. They're reading their word. And even when they're broke, on their Because anybody, like, I just had to send a letter off, to, you know, in the ministry, it's a lot to juggle. And that's why I, we've asked God to continue to send us soldiers, laborers. And y'all are part of this. Y'all are a part of the kingdom of heaven, which means you automatically are part of this ministry. Because this ain't a membership club. Would I look like a golf club? Like, you're now I'm a member. Or, you know, no. Nah. You're a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. You understand? If you serve the Lord, you ask forgiveness, you walk in it, you're a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Never let nobody make you a member anywhere because of your opposite of citizenship. If you're a member somewhere, the people can vote you in and out. <laughs> but if you're a citizen, only the king can kick you out of chiefs. So when anybody hanging on you, when I hang on you, brother, it don't matter. Probably Jesus loves you. He's <laughs> like, man, y'all running y'all mouth, but my king loves me. Y'all just know something in that crap. Y'all can hang on you, brother. He loves you. That's the attitude you gotta have. You understand? So. You know, I had to give y'all a testimony of just how many souls the Lord has been bringing to my wife. Just bringing them to us. People just randomly call it our phone. Just, I swear, I, and it's like, hallelujah. Thank you for calling, brother. Thank you for calling, sister. Because this shows me that God is getting ready to take them. <laughs> hallelujah. And, and, and you are a part of the kingdom of heaven. You get ready. This ain't no personality ministry where it's about works. 
It's about the Lord. It's about all of the children coming together. All of the children coming together. You see that? You see the big picture. Man, when I start to see souls that are crying out, souls that are so quick to pray, you know, just yesterday, I went this to a sister. You know what I'm saying? This sister up there is so, and I can see it in her eyes. I gave her a Bible, separated her from the other sister that was in the room, and I said, let's pray. And she was so quick to pray. But you know what she said before she prayed? You know what she said before she prayed? She said, listen, I gotta let you know, though. I don't know how to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how to do it. You know what I told her? Man, you don't know how, how much of a sweat you are to see. God can deal with you. God can work with you, girl. God, it's hard for God to work with you. I've always been born again, girls. I've always been born again, brothers. You know what I'm saying? That think they've had Jesus since they came out of the womb or something. But you see, when you humble like that, that to me that reminds me of Peter. Peter was just like, Lord, I don't know if you want to deal with me. I'm kind of messed up right now, man. You know what I mean? I got cracked in the boat, got like, you know what I mean? Got the time building up to the car seat. Lord, you know what you want to do, Lord, is go down the block, take a left and right, and in a beautiful, nice suburban neighborhood. There's a lot of people there you can use. You gotta stop that, man. I told the sister, I said, man, that's perfect. You know how? Amen. I said, in the book of Acts, the, the, the disciples, the Pharisees, reasoned amongst themselves and said, these are unlearned and uneducated men talking to us. So stop letting people take the, 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 the vision God is putting in your eyesight for who he has you to be. It's not a contest to see who can be the mightiest prophet. Although, I think every child of God would love to be so honorable to God. You know, just multiply food for 5,000 and heal a million AIDS patients. And if your motive is to please God, and it goes back to that, your motive has to be right. And that's where we're going with tonight. The motive. What is our motive? You know what I'm saying? What is your motive when you do kind things? Do you look over your shoulder and see if anybody's watching you see that homeless man? That was one of the hardest things for my wife and I. I got a video that I still haven't been able to do a word on the street video. And it's a little difficult to find a cameraman. You know what I'm saying? I can't be like holding the camera one one on. And if my wife's in the video or she got the boys to watch. You know what I mean? So pray for more laborers locally with us. We got a lot of laborers worldwide, but like laborers locally, I need laborers too, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people are caught up in different things. And you want to find people that are that are um, reliable too, you know what I mean? So anyways, I got a word on the streets. I don't even want to say it because I don't want to, you know, mess up the surprise, but it has to do with feeding homeless people, but in a different way, you know what I'm saying? And like, we, we do this without a camera from now. Poor people, in the name of Jesus, and preach to them. Well, you see, we do it because we love God. So now, I, I just don't like how many of you can do it on camera like they call me. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, dog. I've never seen you on the block just trying to get a nice, soft story YouTube video. Like, you really love people. You know what I mean? Like, our hearts gotta change. You ever see those pictures of, like, that white lady and like, you know, she'll be in like, uh, you know, Nigeria in the slum somewhere holding an African baby. But she's not holding the baby. Like, come here, baby girl. You know, you're so cute. She's kind of holding it like it's a bag of groceries. Like, come on, man. Don't pray with me, dog. Because as soon as they start taking a picture of you with that baby, you ain't chilling with that baby. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not just saying white people only. I'm just giving an example from what I physically see. All races have issues. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying, stop all that. Because I think that, that gets God upset more than a lot of other stuff. Because he's like, yo, it's better you just go somewhere. Don't try to pretend like you're from me. You don't even love that child you're holding. You just want people to donate to you. Because you don't want money to use as a weapon. You want money to fill your belly. To get the face you desire. Nobody could ever justify in the last days where it was supposed to be getting 
listening, watching NFL Sunday. Check it, go Jesus. Jesus ain't playing with you, dog. When Jesus comes back, he's got a sword in his hand, buddy. You know, the Bible says that there's going to be blood up to his kneecap. You think he's playing with somebody. We got to get a better understanding of who we're dealing with here. We need the fear of God to come back in the church. And you know what I'm so excited for, saying? I told another beloved brother this the other day. We were fellowshipping on the phone while I was working. <laughs> and sometimes, man, it's beautiful, you know, you can do that because some people don't have that opportunity. But I said to him, I said, yo, you know what I'm waiting for? You know what I'm excited for? You know what I'm excited for? It's this. I'm, I'm excited for the Holy Ghost power to come upon the church again like it did in the book of Acts. And I was like, because then Christians can't be thinking like they do. You know what I'm saying? Because you notice when Ananias and Sapphira, how did you notice? Oh, she's a preacher anointed that's already here, y'all. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jesus, you get the glory for this. Did you notice that after Ananias and Sapphira, there was no other Ananias and Sapphira mentioned? Why? Because people were shook. People were scared. People were like, yo, don't play with me, dog. Um, you're not playing with the Holy Ghost, man. Did you hear what happened to Ananias and Sapphira? Struck down dead. I'm excited for that to come back. The phantom would just, you know, see, preachers on TV just talk like, you know, just, what well, I want you to do right now is cut a thousand dollar check in our prophecy. <laughs> Why is it God convicting your heart like don't put that in your heart? 
girl, don't do it. Don't put it on that skin of ass lady's like, don't do it. When you stop hearing that voice, that's when you need to be terrified. You need to go run for the Holy Ghost and look for him. He's like, Lord, come back, please. I want your conviction. I want you to yell at me. That's when you need to be terrified. When you don't get that conviction, I'm scared. Put my heart. Last night, I seen a man pray for him. I'll just give you his first name. That's all I need to get. His name is Todd. Lift him up in prayer. When he was my neighbor, man, I was, you know, God was using me to fire him up. He, he has an anointing on him. He really does. He knows the word. I like the way he moves. Guess what? The man got caught back up in drugs, adultery. He's walking the streets now, trying to get money for crack and heroin. Just lost like a ball in night me. Whatever they say it is. Lost like a, 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 a dust thing in the wind. Whatever they say. You know, just, it hurt my heart to see the man. And when he keeps me, I see the rage in his eyes like it was my fault. And it just passed. I was at a red light. He was walking. And I just started to pray to the man. I said, oh, God, save that man. But, you know, it gets to a point when you play with sin too much that God just gets you up. You know that? I'm not saying you can't get saved. But God will put you in that bag. He said it in Revelation. He said, you know what? Y'all love Jezebel, don't you? I'll tell you what. I'm going to buy the hotel room. I'm going to even speckle the bag with cinnamon for y'all. Go ahead. Leave with her. You want her? Here you go. Keep it real. You understand? This is needed for the body of Christ. Of God. We need it because it gets us in line. And I'm telling you, saints, when we all have the motive and we all have one mind and we're all on one accord and all we want is to please God, all we want is to do His will, you won't see a force on this earth like you never imagined. I see a blind man to he said, why is he blind? When the power of the Holy Ghost can heal him. I'm not healing a child like I'm secretly walking on water at night. It's a problem we're all going through, sin. Because I'm telling you right now, God is telling his bride something. Think about this. Just picture this for me. I got Bible scriptures to go over, and I got all of that. I wasn't planning for this. This is the Holy Ghost right now speaking to us. I didn't say you. I said, oh, the coming ball. I'm included. I'm getting shot at. By the word of God. That's a sniper you cannot escape. So thank God. But listen to this carefully. What is going on on this earth right now? How can we be surrounded by so much evil? But yet this any power of God on the earth. It's not God. It's us. I'm going to tell you something right now. The Holy Spirit is holy. You understand? He's holy. So what do we got to do? Prepare holiness. Move in holiness. And that allows the Holy Spirit our life. Just think about that for me. We're talking about the Holy Ghost. Pure. John didn't even know how to describe it. Okay. What's the greatest, most timid animal I can think of? Right? Okay, a dove. Because he's all pure white and he's just so gentle. He would never harm all you like a dove. Exactly. Okay. Like, just think about this. Just think about this. The Holy Ghost is holy. I know that's like what we're talking about. Like, I know that. Get it, Holy Ghost, I can pretty holy. But just think about that for a minute. Just stop saying Holy Ghost all the time. And just actually think about it. He's holy. Where he dwells, there's no such thing as evil. There's no such thing as sin. He's pure. And then you expect him to just come. Lasting into your spirit. But you're still watching porn. You're still listening to the radio on the 
way home. You still, you know, you still got mad anger in you. You still got unforgiveness in you. There has to be a process. There has to be healing. You have to make money for the Lord, John said. He said, listen to what he said. He said, I am the one. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. They straight the ways of the Almighty. Prepare you the way of the Lord. Are we preparing the way of the Lord? If we got a phone call and we were living in the jungles of Australia, and we happen to have a cell phone and equipment, we just can't get the technology. And a man said, in a month I'm coming to land my plane in your village. And I'm going to distribute all this drugs and everything. In this low runway, we have to prepare our one runway. We have to flatten the ground, move out all the trees, make it long enough for the plane to land. Where's the runway for Jesus? He's been flying in the clouds for years. Just waiting for somebody to make a landing. A runway, just, you guys don't get it. You think it's all out. You think I'm supposed to do everything. I'm telling you, this is real. This is the word of the living God. Because I'm getting convicted just preaching it. Go to Colossians, chapter 1. Colossians, chapter Oh. 
trillion in my bank. I want to be the richest king on the planet. You know, so I was just saying, Lord, you know, I ask you to go get somebody to be a king of the people, to be right for them, to be a king of them. No. Phenomenal to me, you know. And because of that, God gave him more than he would have asked for. You see how God, did you catch the hidden jewel there? Did you catch the wisdom there? So, anyways, we're in that. Lord, give us your love. 
love in the spirit. And Lord, we ask that you give us the desire. To want this prayer to work. With that being said, Lord, it's okay. With that being said, fill us with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom. And all spiritual understanding. And all spiritual understanding. That we can walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. That we can walk worthy unto the Lord unto all pleasing. Being fruitful in every good work. Being fruitful in every good work. In every work. And increasing in the knowledge of God. And increasing in the knowledge of God. In the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to your glorious power. Unto all patience and long suffering. Unto all patience and long suffering. With joyfulness. With joyfulness. Giving thanks to the Father. Giving thanks. Who has made us partakers of the inheritance of, of the saints in life? Who has made us? Who has made us partakers of the inheritance of the inheritance of the saints in life? Of the saints in life. Lord, Lord. Deliver us from the powers of darkness. And translate us into the kingdom of your dear son, Jesus Christ. And translate us into the kingdom of your dear son, Jesus Christ. Translate us and bring us into the kingdom of your In Jesus' name, amen and amen. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, God, saints, let, let me tell you something. This is going to be a humongous breakthrough in your life. When you're reading the Bible, and I've said this so many times, but I don't mind saying it so many times more. Because it's it's my nature. Sometimes you just need things repeated to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, God has repeated himself before. Like, I don't know what it is about humans, but we constantly have to be kind of, you know, knocked along the path. Kind of like a shepherd hitting us with a staff. You know what I'm saying? Even myself, many things God has had to repeat himself with me, and I, and I don't like it, but it is what it is. And it's like, when you're reading the Bible, and you come across something like this, stop and take advantage of that prayer. And claim that prayer for yourself. You understand? Claim that prayer for yourself. Because if you don't know it, but supernaturally it's going to manifest in your life. As long as you believe the thing, just believe it. Believe it. And it's going to manifest. And that's the thing. You can't just read the word. Just, just to read it. We have to read the word with a goal in mind. We have to read the word expecting. And the Bible says, For well, unto them that are expecting his return. Notice that key word. And are looking for him. Shall he. Revealed himself. Notice that his message in there. For those that are looking and expecting his return. Do you know how many people are mocking right now saying, ah, Jesus ain't returning in our lifetime. Ah, he ain't going to be. Maybe in a couple hundred years or something. Whatever. Where is he? I don't see him. This is crazy. You see all these signs. You know. Do you honestly see human beings lasting another hundred years? Look at look at the weapons, uh, look at the weaponry on this earth right now. We're talking nuclear stuff that can wipe out a whole country like that. Think about what I'm saying. 
sitting there just standing there with a with a hand out asking for money. And you just walk right up to him. You say, Sir, you hear this voice? You know, you heard me. You got a dollar for him. A blind man? Money I don't have. What do I do about it? Take the what? 
Israel was fighting the Philistines and some things, one of those things. And, yo, know, he was starting, Moses had to lift his staff up over his head, right? And uh, Moses, the power of God was so mighty that Moses well, couldn't even hold the staff up. And every time Moses would drop the staff, the other army would start defeating the Israelites. But as long as he kept the staff over his head, he would win the war. And then Aaron and um, I think it was some of the I helped me. It was either Aaron and Miriam. Four people had to help him. And they both went on each side of Moses and lifted up the staff with him. And then they overcame the war. Well, what is the hidden message here say? I'll go to the scripture, but we got a lot to go over tonight, so I expect you to study that yourself. I should have, you know, we should not have to read every chapter because you know nothing about it. That's your fault. You know, who's, who's Moses? Come the way. Take 20 minutes and explain Moses. That's your fault, buddy. You should know who Moses is right now. You should know the story, man. But you're stopping the flow of, of, of the preaching. What is the hidden revelation here, man? The, the, the rod of God representing Christ, everybody knows that. Because when Moses put down his rod and it became a serpent, and then the, the Pharaoh put down his two magicians and they formed serpents, the, the serpent of God devoured the serpent of the devil. And we know that a rod was the divine power of God, which is Christ, because Christ gets the arm of God, which represents power. So what's the hidden revelation here? Moses had to keep Christ over his head. You have to lift Christ above you. Anybody try to lower Christ to your viewpoint, or face to face with you, or under you, you lose the war. And when you lift Christ up above you and say, Lord, I can't do it without you. You need to be over me, Lord. You need to be ruling over my life. Then you win every battle that comes your way because Christ is over you. Okay, when did the other two come into play? We have to have divine fellowship between one another. The Bible says, be there for one another, to comfort each other, to help each other in times of need. So if nobody was there to help Moses, he would have fell to the ground. We have to be there to help each other and help lift up the power of God over our lives. That's why it's so beautiful for fellowship. That's why we get together at least once a week, especially on Thursday. That's a good word if you caught that. Yeah. In Jesus' name, and he gets all the glory. Yeah. I want to show you something. I want to I wanna go over two, two separate things. And, you know, when I was thinking about this, you know, check this out, man. Right? How many of y'all know about the kid? My name is the kid. I'm not just calling him to be short. Right? I love the brother because of how bold he was. What a book 19, or what that down in his notes, you can read it yourself. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we'll touch up in a little bit, right? So, Luke 19, right? And while we're going there, let's just take a little minute, as we're skimming through the pages of glorified the Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus, we respect the deacon that tonight, we respect for being with us. We thank you for preparing our hearts to receive the word, and even a bold preaching, Lord. Sometimes it's not easy to receive, but it's me. Need you, Lord. We're trying to dig a ditch, plant the garden, we're trying to dig the earth, and it's rocks in the way. Gotta pull out the hand and smash those rocks. Smooth out the ground, and sometimes the hammer is needed, Lord, we thank you. So, Luke chapter 19, right? Check this out. Hold on. 19. Right? Verse 1. The Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Hmm. Jericho? And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. 
And he sought to see Jesus the whole world who he was, but not suppressed because he was little of stature. <laughs> and she ran before he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was the bad, bad way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, The king of the age, calm down. But today, I must abide in your house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Oh, man, this is so beautiful. And when they all saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by any false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Jesus said, then this day salvation comes to your house. So much that he also is the son of Abraham. The son of man has come to seek and to save that which he lost. I'm here to tell you something, saints. I want you to write down the keys. Write down that name. And I want you to put a dot down. I'm going to say, oh, dear, Lee, I come into my house and you don't have lobster for me? 
I say, I'm yelling for my God. And the man, by very name, meant unclean. But notice that when he's taking it to the presence of Jesus, he took off his garment and ran for him. And became clean. Became healed. Became a follower of the Lamb of God. Some of us haven't taken up our garment. You what you think he had on a nice looking robe? He had some stank garment. That was a beggar's garment. You ever see those brothers on the side down on the side of the road? I got them all over these over here. Half of them don't need the whole side. They just love collecting a check on the under, under, you know, their little extra side check. They get food stamps. They got a place to stay and then they pretend they don't take your money. Buy the food. Stop giving that crackhead ten dollars. Stop giving that drunk five dollars. Buy the food. He said he's hungry, right? Right. Because we will just see what happens real quick. Oh yeah, bro. I'm going to struggle. What you want? Oh, uh, uh, I'm diabetic. I can't eat bread. Uh, brother, bread is not sugar. I mean, uh, uh, I'm full now. But the sign means I'm, I'll be hungry later. Man, you're drunk. You don't need to repent. I ain't giving you nothing but the word of God right now. Yep. You understand? Why the lady had on some dirty, dirty garden, took it off. Like, man, I don't even want to smell going in my garden. I'm leaving this tossed out beggar clothes behind me. I'm going to the king of glory, and God gave him the sight. But by very name, his name means son of a queen. Because you notice what the disciples said. He said, Lord, whose sin was it? Was it his mother and father that made him blessed? And he kind of goes with his name because he's the son of unclean. His mother and father were filthy. And his generational curse still thought they had made him dirty by nature. But in the presence of God, he can make a, a sinner like the kid is pure and make a filthy blind man like blind man as clean as we have in the what could he do in your life if you would just go above and beyond? Stop blending in with the crowd. Stop trying to, stop pretending. Stop just going with the flow. Climb a tree, man. Climb a tree, man. Scream to the Lord. Cry out to him at night. You watch what he'll do to you. And let me not leave the sister dies now. Don't make me go to my beloved sister. You stop it, don't get 
was. I wanted to say something. I was going to say, we, it was funny that you said that because I remember like a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago, I was singing to the Lord and, you know, like, I don't know what song I was making up, but, um, but what, like, once you get finished with that, you just have like this amazing feeling of peace and joy and, and love and all of that. And this is one song I love to sing. Like, granted, it ain't nothing I made up. But, I mean, granted, it's a little corny, though. But it's like, when you really think about it, like, even, 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 um, the song that, um, that y'all got, you know, from, uh, from Club Life to Love Life, you know, it's kind of a jammer, right? And then when you, like, get away from, like, all the music and stuff, and you really hear what Lioness is talking about, walk in the light of Jesus Christ, like, man, that's, like, so powerful. And, you know, yeah, I just, I just have to say that. Well, I'm glad I Precious in your eyes. 
Y'all make sure the word of God is fresh. I didn't even know that was there. Hey. Oh, let's keep going. And it came at the time when Eli was laid down in his place. And his eyes began to black still. And he could not see. Just so y'all know, Eli was dedicated to the Lord. You know what I mean? Eli was living with Samuel. I mean, I'm sorry, the opposite way around. Samuel was living with Eli. Samuel, you know, you know Samuel the prophet. But he was a child at the time. So what would it say? When it came to pass at that time that Eli was laid up in his place to get them, Mother God tired, if you know what I mean. And in the ear of the Lamb of God went up in the temple of where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down sleeping. And the Lord called Samuel, and he answered and said, Here am I. And he ran to Eli and said, Here am I. Did you call me? And he said, Yeah, boy, I didn't call you, man. Go back to bed and stop playing with me. He didn't say it like that, but I'm having a little spice. And the Lord called me out again, Sam. Samuel the Rose went to Eli and said, Here am I. Did you call me? And he answered and said, Man, I did not call you, my son. I'm not going to lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again. The third time that he rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I. Did you call me? And finally, Eli catches on and perceives that the Lord has called the child. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down and it shall be that if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears you. So Samuel went and laid down in his place, and of course, the Lord came to him and stood and called, as the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant hears you. Man, you're not shook. He must have been. <laughs> I would have been shook. Nine years old, just God Almighty, honorably calling me. I'd have been just shivering like this. Please. Look at this. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel. And which both the ears of everyone that hear it, and shall think of. In that day I will perform against Eli all the things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows, because his sons made themselves vile and restrained them not, and he restrained them not. Therefore, I swore unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be the sacrifice nor offering forever. And Samuel lay until the morning, and he opened the door to the house of the Lord, and Samuel stood to show Eli the difference. Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he answered, Here am I. He said, What is the thing that the Lord has said to me? I don't think you ought to know, Eli. <laughs> I pray thee, hide it not from me, God do so to thee, and more also if thy heart anything from me of all the things that he said to me. To thee. And Samuel told him every bit and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord, let him do what seemeth him good. Samuel wrote, and the Lord was with him, and did that none of his words fall to the ground. Now look at this, right? He's there. Try to see it. So Samuel's young brother, I don't know, maybe six, seven years old. He was old enough to proceed. You know what I mean? Old enough to communicate. So he wasn't like three or four. He's probably like five, six, seven, eight, one of those. Here he lay in bed and the Lord called him. But instead of him going to the Lord, he runs to the man in the temple. He lies. Three to whoever he was. Three times this happens where he's been between Eli and the Lord. And finally, Eli says, hey, God is calling He said, you can call you again, so here I am. He said, listen. And the message was actually for Eli. The big judgment to him. Where am I going to be? Too many anointed brothers and sisters. They come from regular life. They struggled. They had their fair share of sin. They come to know God. And when God is trying to call you to get personal with you, 
for a long time, but long enough to have some testimonies for y'all. And I'm sure you have testimonies for us. So look at this. We've got a place. Just, you know, just to support, pray for the people. And the Lord will be like, I want you to speak to them now. You know, this, this, and this. Now, I'm going to repent. You know, we will pull the pastor aside. So where am I going with this? Stop running past the voice of God to all of these men. It's okay to learn from men of God. That would be foolish for me to say to you that I'm teaching you led by God right now. But what I'm saying is, deal with God personally before you deal with man. Because you never know what God has in store for you to bring to men and women. You don't know who God has called you to be. And notice that if you walk in the way from the statues of God, you'll make it that none of your words fall to the ground. But you'll be a mighty man of the of God. But you'll preach a word of fire that'll cut people to the heart. The big people. Notice that when Peter stood up, I get a kick out of pastor that started up a ministry, right? And I was there at one day. So I can laugh through the experience. Where, you know, well, we got to get up all this money because we need to get a, a sound system. We got to get $2,000 speakers. We got to get a microphone. You know, and their building is like, you know, the size of my living room. Like, God, you don't need that. You know, just yell it into a microphone, but when everybody can hear your voice, like, why do you need a microphone? Peter didn't use no microphone, and 3,000 people were cut to the heart. That's the key word. They were cut to the heart. They said, well, what should we do? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for such a power of the Holy Ghost that we can preach to 3,000 people and they're cut to the heart and say, what should we do? Well, I know what to do. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of the sin. You shall see the of the Holy Ghost. But what you need to know is that when God calls you, you've got to be ready for his voice and not mistake it for something else. So is God calling you? It doesn't have to be, oh, calling you that tomorrow you start your own ministry and no more foolishly. You know, everything has to be in order. What you think really it's about? Is it, is it about getting up a ministry and getting a website and, and, and you know, getting a suit? And no, these are all outer things, man. It's about proclaiming the kingdom of heaven. No ministry can be lifted up higher than the kingdom of heaven because any real ministry is the kingdom of heaven. Even if it has the title. The battle gospel ministry is the ministry of the kingdom of heaven. When I start hearing people go, we can't go I'm going to stop, go to them and say, show uh, Jesus Christ today. Because when you start to go out by a ministry, more than God, there's a problem. When you start to go out by anything more than God, it's a problem. So if we recap, I had, no, I'm going to keep it real with you, man. I had so much more to give God from that read by the Lord that's been bubbling in my spirit, but it's already too late. Eventually, maybe we'll do two nights with you. Who knows? But I just, man, the word, man, is growing in us. I can feel it. In all of us. But I say, honestly, I'm not just talking about my household, man. The word is growing in you. But you see, uh, you may not know it. May not know this, but God is getting ready. But the question is, are you preparing the way? He's been flying in circles in the sky for years, waiting for you to prepare the way so he can land and give you what he has in his place. Because I'm telling you right now, if you think it's going to be years and years away that the outpouring of the Holy Ghost comes back, you're going to miss it. My Bible says, unto them that are looking for his return and expecting him, shall he return. Oh. My question is, are you expecting him? Like, is, he in your, is he in the front of your mind or in the back of your mind? Because this is what God has been showing me. Because God has that mercy where, you know, anybody that personally knows our life, 
motives were wrong, it's going to fall to the ground. It's not going to prosper. So, start today and be real with God. He's like, Lord, I'm not a problem here. Sometimes I help people just because I know it's the thing to do. Sometimes I do things, Lord. Sometimes I read because I know you want me. Lord, I don't like that. Can you change me? Can you make me where I can't go a day without your word that is precious in my eyes? Yo, what you think God would rather you do? Pray like that or fake the fuck? You know, if you think about what I'm saying, be real with him. And he loves when you're just real with him. Like the sister that did a sinner's prayer the other night when I was working. Not night, the other day, whatever it was. Oh, I, I don't know how to pray. And God bless you for keeping it real, sister. All right, no problem. God will teach you how to pray. See what I'm saying? Keep it real, man. Keep it real with God. You go through some gentlemen, especially the brothers, and you got lust in your heart. Bring it to the Lord. Like, Lord, I ain't gonna find Lord. You see my eyes. Not that red light. No girl crossed. We had those yoga pants on, it was a wrap, Lord. I'm sorry, help with them. Take that from my eyes, Lord. I don't have to be blind like by a man to get through this, Lord. Take that out of my soul. I need a wife. I'm struggling. Or if you're a sister that's not married and you find yourself lusting after the boss on your job, bring it to the Lord. Don't be afraid. Bring it to Him. He's your shower. When you stink, go take a bath. I'm afraid to get into the shower. I don't want to touch the soap. I mean, the soap is clean and I'm dirty. I need to remind it. No, man, that's what it's for. Gotta be real with God. Hold on, I'm, for some reason I get angry. You know what I mean? I get in the car and all of a sudden I'm a different person. People don't let me go. I'm fed that 
have to be looking up. We have to be ready for it. We have to be expecting his return. I'm not just talking about the rapture. I'm talking about the return of the Holy Ghost. What about that one? Well, the Holy Ghost is here. I know he's here. I'm talking about the prophecy. And he shall pour out on all flesh. I'm not talking about every person on the earth. I'm talking about all those that are looking. All those that are tending to the garden. Torn in the soil. Staying from sin. Avoiding foolishness. I know it. I'm telling you. If there's one thing I can tell you, is the lesson I learned in the last week when I started back up at this job. Like, man, here I am. Working a, a regular, you know, what they would call a secular job, you're nine to five. And I'm working more for the Lord in my nine to five job than I am my nine to five job. God is saying something, man. I know uh, there's a couple other people that I talk to tell me, man, I was at work, you know, minister to a brother, a minister to a sister. It's like, hallelujah. Thank God. It's not showing God that's what you want, man. You want to do the will of God. I would love for so many to be able to just work full time for Jesus. What do you think is going to happen? See, again, we're wrapping it up. It's 11 o'clock. I understand that. But just listen to me carefully. You've got to start changing the way you're looking and perceiving me. Remember we talked about when the power really hit? You're going to have a lot of anger. A lot of people are going to be mad when you think that. We think that Stephen and I got a little like Paul did. He didn't burn it anymore. You know how much, you know how much the industry makes off the AIDS patient? You know how much they make off a cancer patient? Man, you're going to have some money on your head. Guess what? It don't matter. Because my Bible says if Christ be for you, who can be against you? It don't matter how many people seek to take your life. If it's not your time to go, you can't take your life. You understand? You know how many times they tried to kill John? The one who wrote the book of Revelation? The one who was able to see the power and glory of Jesus manifested when he fell like a dead man? Man, I heard the rumors, man. They tried to skin him, slay him, boil him, shoot him, stab him, kick him, throw him off a cliff. Man, they got tired. It's like, man, we just can't kill them. I know, throw them on an island. Forget about them. All because God in the flesh said, John, listen, you won't die until I come back. What? Uh, he kept his promise, didn't he? Huh? What people don't know is he came back. In the book of Revelation, he appeared to God. Yeah. So let's wrap it, let's wrap it up with this like this, right? Because we're wrapping it up, right? So we got to get our mind focused on what's really going to happen when the power comes. This is what you call preparing the way. You get yourself prepared spiritually and mentally and physically. Because you got to understand what's going to happen. Do you know how many religious Sunday phones are going to stare at you and hate you? When you pull the people out of wheelchairs? I'm telling you from experience, man. I tried to witness, I was witnessing to a lost, uh, I think it was a gangbanger at the barbershop. Brother was just cut to the heart, tears in his eyes, and the devil sent some religious, uh, religious guy up in the barbershop. The guy overheard me talking about the Bible, telling the man about Jesus, I need to turn from the sin. You know what this man said? Well, brother, do you speak in tongues? And if you don't speak in tongues, you don't got the spirit of God. Well, you're a psycho, dog. You're a freak of nature, me. How do you like come into this barbershop and stop the flow of the Holy Ghost and talk you about a doctrine for a sinner? See how crazy that is? These are the very same people that's going to want to kill you. These are the very same people that's going to want to kill you. When you, let's hold on. Hold on. Let's, let's finish it with this. How many of y'all know that when one of Paul's letters, and I got a high five to anybody that knows what this is, Paul said, listen, when I come, when he was writing his letter, he said, when I come to see y'all, I don't want nobody talking off of the lips. I don't want to hear you telling me how good you are. I want to see the power.
power. Yeah. How many of y'all have ever read that before? I have, yo, think about that. Think about that. He said, I don't want to hear you tell me nothing. I don't want to see a nice little poem on your Facebook. I don't want to see lovely pictures of the sun and the sea and plants and gardens and the songs and the hymn. I don't want to see the power. Why is there a blind man in your church, Pastor? Why is there a man in a wheelchair? Every week he comes and cries out to God. He knows why he takes him out of that chair. Why is Sue, the head prostitute, still dying in her fighting? Where is your power? I don't want to hear your scriptures. I don't want to hear your enticing words. I don't want to hear what revelations you've got. Where is your power? Oh, man. That's what Paul was saying. I don't want to hear your tongues, buddy. Don't come at me talking about it. I'm going to fuck up, I'm going to fuck And you got cripples in your service. Go somewhere with that. Well, true. You are proud. But when you start to come at with the power, you see what happens then? Undeniable. People are like, yo, you had the presence of God, man. Didn't you just see the sister? She got herpes on the list. Mother got herpes on his list. And in the presence of God with this man and this woman, just immediately was taken off. Yo, why do you want that power? If you want the power of God, tonight, when you get off the phone, later on, or whenever you get alone, have an honest conversation with the Holy Ghost. You say, Holy Ghost. I want you to genuinely search me out to see why I want this power. And if me, even if it's just a little evil, want it for your own personal gain or glory. Repent about it, ask God to change your heart. Because the only reason you want power is to bring glory to Jesus Christ. That's the only reason you want power is to get sinners cut to the heart to go to Jesus. That's it. And so you can take them to Jesus. Because all the men of God have said it, and I'm saying too. You can take someone out of a wheelchair, but if they don't get pointed to Jesus, they'll just go to hell with wait. You can make a blind man see, but if you don't point to Jesus, he'll just go to hell and see the beautiful flames on the way. Oh. You see how crazy it is? But if your heart is right with God, I promise you, He will give you the Holy Ghost and power. Because remember, it's not by power, but by thy Spirit, says the Lord. The Spirit of God is the giver of the power. You can't deny the power more than the Holy Ghost. He is the power. So, the question you have to ask yourself is, honest to God, where are your motives? Do you love God? Does it hurt you when other people are hurt? Does it hurt you when you see somebody down and out? Do you feel their pain? Do you feel God's pain? David wrote this said in a sermon, and I almost pulled over my car on the highway. I couldn't be honest with you. He said, yo, when I first was in the, when I first came to God, he said, I was walking through New York. I wasn't looking for a ministry. I wasn't looking for a building. I was feeling God's pain for a lost city. That's the secret, saints. That's how we're going to get hit with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the fire. God oh, ain't playing games with us. He's not teasing us like, you know, maybe I'll give you the Holy Ghost. Did you do the dishes today? You know, it's sort of like a husband and wife. You know, there's supposed to be an even relationship with a husband and wife. But sometimes, a husband and wife, I mean, my wife and I, we have finished to a lot of Married couples, we see a lot of things, including in our own marriage. Everybody has areas they need help, and everybody has areas where they're, they're strong. But sometimes you have a husband or a wife that's trying to control you in the bed, where you got to, you know, the husband or the wife will have to do certain things in order to, you know, be intimate with the husband or wife. That the other one will try to manipulate, and I don't feel like doing it. I don't feel it. When I feel like it, that will do it's not it's supposed to be fair. God don't do that with us. God don't say, well, I just don't feel like it. No, I don't know. I don't know. Well, God wants to give you power, man. He wants to give you his holy ghost. He said that anything, he said, if you're being wicked, know how to get drunk, so how much more shall I get through the holy ghost? The secret is you're not prepared.
there in the way. And you're not analyzing the cost. You have not seen the other side of the coin. What happens when you get the power? You understand now? This is what's going to get you the power. This is what's going to get you the Holy Ghost. When you examine your life and say, Lord, I feel like there might be a little me that probably is going to the glory. I don't know if I can tear my clothes, but it comes worse to me. Okay, God can deal with you. But at least you be a real one. He'll clean you up. Step into the shower. And if you don't do that, you ain't getting nothing, buddy. You won't be like Simon the Sorcerer asking to find the power. Like a clown. But if you humble yourself, including myself, because I gotta do this too. Let's humble ourselves before God and say, Lord, give me more food. I want your love. I want your faith. I want your power. I want your truth. It's not just about the power, y'all. The power really, truly, is for the lost. Because if you notice in the Bible, people will come to the heart and repent and they see the miracles, man. And when they talk the anointing of the Holy Ghost, they fear. But what about the other gifts, man? The wise man in the back of the room is just asking for love. Like, Lord, give me your love. Give me your faith. Give me your presence. How many of y'all truly just want the knowledge of God? How many of y'all well, you just want to get to know his personality great. You want to know the revelation of who he is. That's when God will be pleased with you and flood you with all you have to be known his son greater. That's it, but I'm done. I can't think. I'm believing in that. 